Hey there everyone, in this video I want to do a bit of an experiment. I want to compare a dedicated, cooled, one-shot colour astronomy camera with a modified DSLR. So in the interest of making this experiment as transparent and accurate as possible, I'm going to outlay for you right now how the experiment is going to be conducted. For the next four hours, split up between the two cameras equally, I'm going to be shooting the Rosette Nebula. It's well placed and will remain so right from now when I've began shooting to the end of that four hour period. The target itself is going to be shot through an Optolong L Extreme filter. This is going to be placed on the end of the coma corrector so that both cameras are looking through the exact same optical path as much as is possible. In both cases, it will be the same coma corrector on the same scope, on the same mount, using the same guiding setup, and I'm also going to be using the same imaging computer in both cases, which is the ASI Air Plus. For both cameras, I'll also be using the same exposure length. That's going to be five minute shots. And I'm going to continue shooting with each one until I've gathered two hours of data. That should be 24 frames for each. I'll be individually calibrating them all with their own set of flats and bias and darks where appropriate. I'll also hand select all sub exposures so I'll make sure that there's no bad data being stacked whatsoever. Now the scope's going to be running an autofocus every single degree of change throughout the night so losing focus shouldn't be a factor in this experiment and I also just freshly recolimated the scope. It only needed a tiny, tiny tweak but I did it anyway for the sake of them both having the best chance possible. Now there are a couple of things that I simply can't standardise as much as I'd like to between the two cameras in this experiment and I'm going to talk about those right now. So the first main difference is going to be the difference in processing. I will try to process both images in parallel and take them basically to the absolute limits before the data starts to badly break down and include lots and lots of noise in the image, but I'll be making every effort to process them as well as I can. And to that end, I'm going to make the data available that I captured tonight to share with anybody who's interested in basically processing this data on their own to draw your own conclusions. The only other thing that I can't keep the same between the two is going to be ISO or gain settings. Now on the 700D I'm going to be using ISO 1600 as online reports and graphs would suggest that that is the optimum setting for astrophotography with that camera and on the 2600 MC Pro I'm going to be using gain 100 as through my own experience and again online graphs and such would report that that's a fantastic setting for deep sky astrophotography. Now before I head off inside and just keep an eye on this data capture, I thought it's only fair to add really that this is never going to be an apples to apples comparison because of the massive price difference between these two cameras and also the age difference. Even if they were both released just yesterday, there's still that huge gap in price between the two and that's always going to bring with it a performance difference. However, with all that said, I still think that this is going to be an interesting experiment to make and I hope that you do too. So I'm going to head off inside now and get to image capture. Well, it's about half past four in the morning and unfortunately it's completely clouded out. I'm going to wait out a little bit and just see if it clears, but if not, I'm just going to have to set up tomorrow and hope that the experiment is still valid. So we're here now on the next night. Unfortunately, it has cleared up and looks set to stay that way right the way through till dawn. Luckily, it's completely flat calm, and the only bad side to having to wait another night is that the uh, the moon is now closer to the Rosette Nebula than it was on that first night of capture, but only by one day. So it's not going to make too much difference to the validity of this experiment, I think. Well, that's the data capture portion of this experiment now finished. I took a good look through the DSLR data from last night, and it looks like I've got about 19 good frames. So it's not quite the two hours that I'd hoped for, just a little bit over an hour and a half, but still I'll select 19 frames from this to match that same amount of data and it should still remain quite a reasonable approach to getting a valid result. Well, I'm gonna continue on with shooting the rosette for a while now. It seems a waste to uh, stop imaging at this point in the night, so I'm just gonna keep gathering data for a separate photograph um, to the one that I'm gonna process with 19 frames to match the DSLR one. And I guess we'll speak again at the computer. 
All right, so it's a few days later now and everything is stacked up and ready to be compared on the computer screen. We'll do that just in a moment. In total, I captured 19 usable frames on the DSLR, so I matched that with the one-shot color camera. Also, giving us one hour and 35 minutes of total integration time for each camera. Now, I realize that that's not much, but at least it is the same amount for both cameras and should give us, I would hope, a valid comparison. Okay, so we're over on the computer now, and as you can see, I've got both images on the screen at once, and I'm gonna do some very basic processing to them completely in tandem. All I've done so far is crop both images stacking artifacts completely out so that we can just go ahead and stretch freely. I've set up a background preview, which in both images cases is preview number one, and a white point preview, which is preview number two. Both images, as you see them right now, are in a completely linear phase. So you can see there's probably more dynamic range on the one shot color image over here on the right than on the DSLR. But we'll soon find out what things look like when we get to head to stretching them. So let's begin on that right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply an STF to both images. So right away you can see there's a huge difference in color balance. So the first thing I wanna do now is well, the second thing, I guess, is do a color calibration background neutralization. So this, I'm gonna use that background preview for this. So DSLR preview number one, that's the background. Go ahead and apply that and a fresh STF. And now the same thing just for this one shot color image. So one shot color preview number one and apply. Whoops, a fresh STF to both of them there. The next thing I want to do is do a color calibration. So that's the tool color calibration, now aptly named. Again, we'll do the DSLR first. So the white reference in this case is preview number two, DSLR preview two, and background reference preview number one. Apply that, a fresh STF reset the tool and let's do the same thing for the one shot color image so preview two preview one and apply again a fresh stf on that and now as we zoom in a little bit i can see there's some green ringing around stars on the uh, one shot color image there so i'm just going to apply an SCNR, that's Subtractive Chrominance Noise Reduction. I'll do that on both images. And we can get right ahead to comparisons now. Uh, I'd originally intended to do a full processing job on these two, but I think that's probably not gonna be a fair comparison because different noise scales react differently to tools being applied in a similar manner. So really I'd have to go through and process both images slightly differently to get a really fair result. But I think what is fair is to just stretch both images by the same degree, which STF should do automatically for us. I'll just make sure that they're in a uh, stretched state now for us. Well, a screen stretched state at least. And we can go ahead and start to do some comparisons. So I'm gonna zoom both images into one to one ratio. So you can see, of course, the one shot color image appears larger on screen and that's because it's a higher pixel count camera so a one-to-one -one reproduction is going to take up more space on screen one thing that's become immediately apparent to me right now is that the dslr image is sharper now i don't really know why that might be because i know that both images were perfectly in focus and the scene didn't change really because most of the data was taken over the course of one night with only a little small section of data for the uh, one shot color camera taken on the second night. I did use those first uh, first night frames for the one shot color in this stack. Now, we know that they're in focus because it's been performed by an autofocus and because there's always a telltale factor with uh, Newtonians and that you see these star spikes here, the diffraction spikes, when these go out of focus, a Newtonian telescope, they start to split into two, like double vision almost, as if you're, uh, you're looking at it and you're drunk. <laughs> but um, one other thing, if we zoom in a little bit more, we can get an idea for the noise grain in both images. I'll zoom it in kind of really far because uh, I want this to become apparent even through YouTube compression. It looks like the stars 
for some reason a tighter on the DSLR image and the noise is clearly lower on the one shot color image but that said also seemingly and I don't know why this would be as it's so much more of a sensitive camera the the signal seems to be higher on the DSLR image um, this is completely not at all what I were expecting to see when going into this test I thought there'd be practically a no contest to be quite honest with you um, okay so what else can we compare it if we go down to this kind of leaping uh, panther section down here as I like to think of it and compare them a roughly similar size uh, wow yeah it's, it's definitely sharper this DSLR image if anybody knows why this might be I, I'm well I'm possibly s suspecting that there's some in-camera processing done to sharpen images but I did take care to turn all of that kind of thing off before taking these images um, I've done absolutely nothing to these as I've said I've just stacked them uh, with calibration files and opened them up in PixInsight and you've seen what I've done so uh, there should be no reason for a sharpness difference between these two but undoubtedly in my eyes at least the uh, yeah the DSLR image is well without a doubt sharper yes there's more noise but you know what would you rather have noise or sharpness this is really beginning to uh, <laughs> kind of throw me such a curveball I don't really know where to go with this I should have planned ahead um, well <sighs> all right so this is becoming uh, completely <laughs> puzzling it's definitely raising more questions than offering answers at this point uh, let's go check some different parts of both images I guess this top uh, kind of pillar section all right so on both images again the size is slightly larger when they're both viewed at one half uh, scale but it's more than good enough for a comparison I'll zoom it up to one to one um, there we go on both images and it looks to me like the pillar is far more cleanly resolved in the DSLR image now what's just occurred to me is that maybe the pixel scale is a factor between the two here because I know the DSLR has slightly larger pixels which would normally offer slightly less detail in an image but in this case it also offer more signal um, per pixel as each photo site is physically able to catch more light which could have made up for some of that sensitivity difference between the Canon 700D sensor and the 2600 sensor I really think I'm going to have to approach this again on another night and make double sure of this because, uh, you know, I, I would have made any number of predictions, uh, but this wouldn't have been one of them, to be honest. That the DSLR can really, really put up a strong, strong argument uh, in this kind of photography. Now, granted, this is both through a L Extreme dual narrowband filter so maybe the things will change uh, in one camera's favor or another when I do a comparison with uh, no filtration as I'm shooting from quite heavy light pollution but still uh, I hope that this shows for you guys at home what kind of small difference there really is between them yes there's a lot less noise on the one shot color image if I zoom it right into a two to one view and view somewhere dark in the shot where it should be kind of read noise uh, dominant in that section even after just 19 frames it's a really you know it's, it's not a disgusting looking color model that's on the DSLR it's just kind of to be expected and certainly the uh, the model uh, background noise on the one shot color image is less yes but it's also not a dramatic difference by any means I don't think so this has been extremely confusing if you can think of anything that i should really be testing with this uh do leave a comment and let me know but i think for this image at least that's probably raised too many questions now to continue so <laughs> i think we need another comparison in another video uh and i'm more than open to suggestions so uh, let me know what you think
Well, I think that's about all that I've got for you today. So I'd just like to finish, as always, by saying thank you very much indeed for your time, for watching. A huge thank you to all my YouTube channel members for the support that you're giving. It's absolutely phenomenal and I cannot thank you enough. And I think that's about it. So until next time, clear skies.